today. Please call 800-390-0510. That is 800-390-0510. China should be and will continue to be an economic competitor. And as a large country with a powerful military, you can't go around pushing your little neighbors around just because you're bigger. September 25th, the president of China will make his first official state visit to America. He will be warmly greeted by the president, Barack Obama. The pomp and circumstance of Washington will be on display. State affairs will be held to honor the nation that provides us with most of our goods, the toxic type and the non-toxic. And then maybe the president of the U.S. will turn to the Chinese leader and ask about things that really matter. For instance, the fact China's engaged in a very coordinated and planned cyber espionage attack against businesses, governments, and militaries around the world. And at this stage of the game, it would seem the Chinese merely laugh it off and dare America to say or do anything about it. Let's get to the meat of that planned visit. Welcome back to the Hardline. Journalist in residence at the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies. Former staff writer at the Wall Street Journal with a specific take on issues in Asia. Claudia Rosette joins us. Claudia, always a pleasure to get a chance to talk with you. And as I said to you a couple of minutes before we came on the air, and I think I have to repeat it here, wouldn't it be wonderful to be that fly on the wall when the two presidents get in that room for the first time quietly and Barack Obama starts to maybe get angry with his Chinese counterpart. But then again, why would the Chinese president even care? I mean, it doesn't seem as if there's any reason for him to be worried about this meeting or to back down to anything Obama says. Yeah, that's exactly the problem. The fly on the wall or the Chinese hacker operating the drone fly on the wall or whatever it's going to be. Uh, And I actually think it's a terrible mistake that President Obama is hosting a state dinner. China is a huge and important country. This is very true. But the message that this will send is precisely that America is not serious, that this is a ritual performance. And we're sending that on far too many fronts already. What would be from the other side? Let's just take it this way, Claudia. The the other side who would say, wait a minute, the president needs to do this. He needs to start setting up some serious relations here, needs to start setting some ground rules and start talking. Maybe this is the right thing for him to do. What's the problem with that thinking? Uh, well, the, pro- the problem here is China's not look- Ch- China is one of many countries, important countries, watching America doing nothing retreating, complaining, uh, even the way that the president spoke about it, saying uh, China shouldn't push around his little neighbors as if they're discussing a nursery school event. You know, these are large countries dealing in dangerous things. And what's been going on with the islands, the jockeying with Japan, uh, not to mention the examples that are being set in the Middle East, where, you know, four years into this hideous war in Syria, where the U.S. sat back and just let it happen, Uh, Where does this go? And I I actually think China and Russia right now, and the Iranians, especially with their brand shiny new nuclear deal that everybody is, uh, which is a disaster, are looking and thinking, what can we get? The, the, The president of China isn't going to be looking at Obama and thinking, gee, I better be scared of this. He's going to be looking at him and thinking, what can we get away with? Then let me do this then. With a couple of minutes I have left here, in your opinion, what should the president of the United States be saying to his Chinese counterpart, if anything, in order to start talking about the cyber espionage, the airstrips being built out of nowhere, and the aggression factor for China? He should be saying, if you don't want the Pacific fleet cruising up the Shanghai River in Shanghai, <laughs> uh, you need to stop doing this. That's what he should be saying. Uh, you know, it's sanctions. China has dealt with sanctions on sort of this company, that company here and there. They're actually a major conduit for sanctions. They were one of the biggest sanctions busters working with Saddam Hussein, and they've been one of the biggest working with the Iranians. Sanctions are not going to impress the Chinese government. They'll irritate them. Is it They'll possible? Irritate- is, is it possible that because there's some Muslim extremism that is now beginning to creep into the Chinese backyard, that maybe because we're facing that and they're facing that, this may be a way for us to get together and maybe some common ground for us to fight forward on and create some sort of agreement? Very little. Uh, you know something, they approach their Muslims in ways that I don't think Americans would approve of. Uh, 
are you having a mix of genuine terrorism and the Chinese government has treated for a long time democratic dissidents as if they were terrorists. So it's a complicated scene in China. And I don't actually think they need a huge amount from us, uh, nor are they likely to do much for us. The, the problem we have as far as Muslim terrorists is one that's being fed by a complete lack of real U.S. policy in the Middle East at this point by this rudderless bearing witness. Uh, so, no, we may have something of a common interest, but it's not enough to overcome these enormous differences. Look, the bottom line here is the president is not credible when he draws red lines, and he's got Indeed. to somehow restore that credibility because China can go either way. We draw a line and say, you really don't cross this or you will get hurt. As I said, the Pacific yep, Fleet. There you go. Your and States. the Chinese, quite frankly, will look back at the president and say, you can draw all the lines you want, but they won't mean anything to us, at least at this time, thanks to your actions. Claudia Rose said, we thank you for your time. Stay with us. The fastest 60 minutes of news, the hard line will continue.